Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's pack program, I'm going to be having a look at the next two Bitcoin targets. Having now broken out and closed above the 100,000 for the first time yesterday, the question everyone is asking is that where are the next targets? So I'm going to have a look at two of them using the common technique, which I've used many, many times. And those with a keen eye will have noticed that on this default chart, I've got this yellow parabola, and I'm going to be explaining that as a guide to when the market may well top out. And as per usual, we'll have a look at what's going on in the news, which is influencing the Bitcoin price, as well as the wider markets and the 60 day cycle for Bitcoin to tell us exactly where the market is going in the short term and the medium term. So if that sounds interesting, then get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to have a look at a couple of targets where Bitcoin may well be heading next. And we're going to use the Fibonacci retracement as the accurate indicator, which seems to have given us a very good clue when we came up to the 104,000. So in case you're wondering why we actually turned around at the $104,000 mark just over eight months ago I gave you this target of $104,000 just over eight months ago I did this video called the Bitcoin breakout that if we get a breakout from the Bitcoin charts instead of having a breakout what we had was a consolidation but now that we've broken out you can see quite clearly that the $104,000 which this indicator predicted I'm going to use the same indicator to see what the next two targets are going to be so the first thing we're going to look at is why we turned around at the $104,000 thousand dollar mark and that was the target that the Fibonacci retracement gave us that when we break out here this is where it was going to go to so if we use that Fibonacci retracement from the previous high at 69,000 to the low that we got at the end of the bear market at the end of 2022 and that was at 15,400 you can see quite clearly that this is exactly where we were expected to come to on the 1.272 mark so this is where we've had the pullback. So when we came to the $73,000 mark here, which was about eight months ago, that was the target that the Fibonacci retracement was giving us because this was the actual trend at the time. Now we've had a new trend here. We can use the same Fibonacci retracement to predict the next two main targets here in the shorter term. But looking at the longer term, with this longer term picture, we can see that the 1.414 is at 128,000. So you can use this as another target here and you would expect some sort of a correction and also at the 1.618, which is taking us to around about the 174,000. So these are your longer term targets. And if we go a little bit higher than that, we know that in the past, Bitcoin has actually topped out at the 2.36 level. Now this may seem rather far-fetched, but it's something that we just have to be aware of. And that target is at 526,000. So these are the longer term targets, depending on what Bitcoin does. Obviously there's a lot of water to go under the bridge here. And depending on how things pan out, and by looking at the Bexit indicators, which are gonna be telling us when Bitcoin's going to top out. So lots of things to consider. At the end of the day, nobody has a crystal ball. All we have is the few indicators to give us some sort of a guidance from where we are to the top of the bull market. So the recent trend that we've had so far is from the 73,000 down to the 49,000. And the Fibonacci retracement is going to give us the next two targets up here. And the Fibonacci retracement is going to give us one of the targets. And the other one, I'm going to use a different technique, which classical chartists use. So if we zoom in on this recent trend that we had, the consolidation from 73,800 here. So if we do the Fibonacci retracement from the recent trend of the consolidation that we've had over the last eight months, and that was from 73,800 down to the 49,000 that we bottomed out here back in August. The next main target, as you can see from here, is the 2.272 level, and that is at $124,000. But before we get to the 124, there is another target that you should be aware of. So this particular consolidation that we got from the 73,800 this was our neckline, and this is where we've broken out from there to reach the $100,000 mark. And in classical charting, the head and shoulders pattern is the most powerful pattern there is on the charts. Now you can measure this in many ways, but I find the most accurate way of measuring this is to take the neckline here, 
to the bottom that it reached. And I'm aware that other people use different techniques to do the measurement. And I can only share with you the measurement that I take. And that is from the bottom of the 49,000 to the neckline of 73,800. If you take that measurement to the neckline here at the breakout, what we see here is around about 110, 111,000. So this would be the first target having broken above the 100 on the Sunday's close. So these are the two targets and the 110,000 would make sense because it's a whole round number. And the 124 is the Fibonacci retracement number, which has always proved to be very, very accurate in terms of targets. And this is actually backed up by the Bitcoin choppiness index, which is hinting at 110,000 Bitcoin price, which which will be very tough to crack. So these are the two targets, the 110,000 and the Fibonacci retracement of 124,000. Okay, I'm just going to move on to this yellow parabola that I've drawn here. And I've shown you this parabola dating back to the first cycle, the second cycle, and the third cycle, and how this parabola will help you to ride up the Bitcoin price up to the point where it breaks past the parabola and then you get into the bear market. And similar thing happened here. Once we broke the parabola, then that was the bear market there. And similarly here, once we broke the parabola here, then that was the, the continuation of the bear market. The main thing to consider here is that the parabola is not as accurate in pinpointing the top of the market. It's more of a safety net and a confirmation that the market has turned and we have already topped out. So this is something that we should always be aware of. It's another technique of knowing when the market has turned and then everybody can make up their own minds what they want to do. And I just want to pick up on a few comments that I got from the last video that I did six days ago with this title here, that this is the exact point to stop buying Bitcoin. And some people, unfortunately, took that idea that I'm telling people to sell when the market has topped out. At the end of the day, it's your Bitcoins. If you want to take profits, wherever that's going to be at the top of the market, and our narrative is between September and October 2025, this is where all the indicators are pointing to in terms of the target for the end of the current bull market. And only time will tell whether that comes to fruition. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just using some of the techniques within the charts to give us some guidance as to where the top of the market is. What you do at the top of the market is your business. So my idea was those who want to get out here, you're free to do so. But if you want to ride this back down, then you're free to do so. That's your choice. That's your prerogative. Do what you think is right for you. And everybody's got their own strategies. And there's no one strategy that fits all. So whatever you want to do at the top of this market, you do that. My job is to point out exactly where these reference points are. And everybody can make up their own mind what they want to do. If you want to write this down in the bear market because you've got a particular strategy of keeping hold of your Bitcoins for the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever it is, there is nothing wrong with that strategy. It just means that you're going to be riding out the ups and downs and you want to capture the next few four year cycles. And that's absolutely fine because here at Wisdom Bites, what our strategy on a shorter term basis has been to ride all these ups and downs along the way. And we're now waiting for the rest of this journey where we're going to be riding this up and down to capture all of that and at this point, we will have a chance to either get out of the market or continue to ride the market up and down like many people want to do that. So I just want to make that clear. I'm not giving any advice to anybody to sell at the top here. You're obviously free to make whatever choices you want based on the strategy that you're following. And everybody's following a different strategy. And that's absolutely fine. And these parabolas are incredibly accurate. If you've been in the market long enough, you'll know that these parabolas, if you draw them with the proper support line, Lines like there, you've got one support line here, another one here, and we've been basically going along this support line all the way for the last few months. But as you can see, once we leave the support line, we always come back to it somewhere along the line. So somewhere up here, over the next six to 12 months, wherever it's going to be, the next time we come back to this parabola, the chances are, wherever it's going to be, if we break that, that is really going to be a very good signal that we are in the next 
bear market. And obviously, if you use this parabola in conjunction with our Bexit indicators, and one of them I'm going to show you today, that's the Puel multiple. And if we have a look at the Puel multiple, what we need is values above four, because this indicates that the current minor profitability is significantly higher than the yearly average. And when the Puel multiple reaches the values above four, it often signals a potential market top. And we can see with this chart in the black box there on the 7th of December, so far, the Puel multiple is only at 1.18 and the multiple of four is around about here. So we can see quite clearly that where we need to get to around about four here and where we are currently at 1.18, there's a big gap there to be filled. So according to this particular indicator, we're not actually anywhere near the top of the bull market. OK, so I hope you found that of value. We're now going to move on to what's going on in the news just to keep abreast of exactly what the developments are, which may well affect Bitcoin. And the main thing to note here would be this one here. And that is that, that the US president has actually appointed Paul Atkins for the SEC chair to replace Gary Gensler. So what we've got here now is a situation where we're going from somebody who's been anti-crypto to somebody who's pro-crypto. So we've got a full administration here now who are well on board with the Bitcoin story. And if we move on to the liquidation heat map, we can have a look at the range of the prices that Bitcoin is most likely to be ranging between over the coming days. And these are the yellow zones, as you can see here. The more pronounced one at the top is here at 100,000. And the lowest one here is around about the 98,300. So this is where, as you can see, the price has been coming back down to take out the leverage players with their stop losses at these levels. But there are other lower prices here maybe down to 97,000. So there should be no surprise if we do actually bounce back down to the 97,000 to try and take out the leverage players down here. And as we've seen with the Bitcoin price, it's holding up incredibly well at the top end of the actual rally that we've had over the last month or so. And one of the main reasons has been that if you look at the asset inflows and outflows of the ETFs, we can see that the BlackRock ETF, IBIT, the number of holdings over the last seven days alone have been 26,800. And this is blowing everybody else out of the water. Even the grayscale, which has been bleeding a lot of Bitcoins, that was only down by 2,800, most of which were actually taken up by its mini ETF trust, picking up well over 1,600 of those. But as we can see, majority of the numbers here are green numbers, which means that the ETFs are powering ahead, a lot of demand, a lot of people still wanting to get into Bitcoin. And if we have a look at the wider markets, to see exactly what's happening and what's driving the markets. We're going to start off with the dollar here, which obviously has an inverse relationship with the markets. And as we've been having a look at this, with all these trend lines, they're really proving to be very effective. As we mentioned with this white line here, this was the resistance that we were expecting, which was based on this resistance here. And over the last few weeks, we have got our correction with dollar. It reached a high of 108 and we're currently down to 105. And what we do have is this red line here, this red trend line, which may well be used as a support so we could see a bounce back up to retest that 108 before we make the big move to the downside. And if we were to break above that, then we must take heed of that and see how that's going to affect the wider markets. But at the moment, the way the current trend is, the probability is more to the downside here. And the 61.8 box that I've got drawn from this bottom here to the top of the 108 is around about 102. So this is where I'm expecting this to come back down to, where you would expect some sort of a counter trend rally back up to the red line and then another fall for the next six to 12 months. And that would fit in very nicely with the narrative of the wider markets moving progressively up over the coming six to 12 months. And just zooming out on the daily chart with our 60 day cycles for the SPX, we can see quite clearly from the end of 2022 where this current bull market started, you can see quite clearly if we draw the trend line, the trajectory is very strongly to the upside and you wouldn't want to bet against this kind of trend line. And on the 60 day cycle, what we've really got is that we're coming up to the midpoint of the current cycle, which began here at the beginning of November, and we have the end of that cycle around about end of January. And we're coming to the midpoint. And as we've been following this, we came back up to this point here at 6,000 and just come back to retest the previous resistance here. So we bounced off there as we were expecting over the last few weeks and we're going into the midpoint here. So we may well get the midpoint correction that we normally expect 
whether it's going to be from where we are currently or it's got a little bit more higher to go before we do that. But certainly we've got the rest of the second half of the cycle to go. So we would expect this to go marching on at least until the end of the cycle. But obviously on the 20th of January, we have the inauguration of the new president. So what we could see quite clearly is up to January 20th, whatever that's going to be around here. And then we have the sell the news event going into the end of the cycle. So there's still quite a lot of room for the SPX to grow. And if we move on to gold, what we see is really a symmetrical triangle now forming. And since this symmetrical triangle is at the top of a trend here, so what we expect with a trend going into the symmetrical triangle, we do expect this to be a continuation pattern to the upside. So some people think that we've topped out on gold, but the charts would suggest otherwise. And only time will tell what will happen, but we are going into this triangle. So we will be hitting the tops and the bottoms of these before a breakout either to the upside or the downside, of course, but the probability is more to the upside. And moving on to the 60 day cycle, very interesting candle that we got here, which is this red candle, which is really trying to set the stage for the parameters to the upside and to the downside. This particular candle is called the long legged doji candle, where you get a, where you get a long wick at the top and a long wick at the bottom and a little body in the middle. So what this did was to establish the highs and the lows for the range for a period of time, whatever that period is going to be, so I've marked it with these white dotted lines at the bottom of that range and the white dotted line at the top of that range. So that range is 104,000 to the top and 92,000 at the bottom. So what you would expect with this long legged doji candle, whenever you get this candle, you know that the Bitcoin price is being a little bit naughty. So Bitcoin is on the naughty stool here at the moment. And the main purpose of these long legged doji candles is to shake out people at the bottom of that trend. So when the price comes back and retests at 92,000, it will shake out a lot of the weak hands who will be thinking that this is now topped out. And at the top end, whenever we reach the 104, this is going to suck in more people fearing that they're gonna miss out here. So those two fear and greed are going to be in play for a period of time now where we see this consolidation taking place. So at the moment, what we've got is from the beginning of this cycle, which was on the 4th of November, Currently we're on day 35, so we've still got quite a lot of the actual cycle still to go. But when you consider that we've had a huge rise from the bottom here of the current cycle from around 66,000, we had a massive move to the upside. Usually you would get at the end of that rally here is a period of consolidation before the continuation to the upside here. So it would make sense for us to go into the end of the cycle, which is going to be around about the first week of January, we could quite easily see a consolidation pattern emerging here between 104 and 92,000. And if we're around about the $104,000 mark here around the 20th of January, then that would make sense to have an end of cycle pullback to restart the next cycle, which would then take us above the 104,000. So this is where I'm expecting how the narrative is going to build up going into the new year. And as we've seen, the next target should be about 110,000. So we should get some sort of a break in the next cycle at least to break the 104, get to 110, and then have some sort of a pullback before we move on to the 124,000 target. And that is where you would expect the bigger, the bigger pullback to occur, maybe 20%, even 30%. And the main thing to remember is to always zoom out and realize that the narrative is incredibly positive at the moment. What we have is a pro-crypto administration coming into the USA government. And as we've seen with the ETFs, they're really powering ahead and there's record amounts of buying. And we've also seen previously that, that there are many countries and sovereign funds intending to buy into Bitcoin where the supply is low and the demand is very high. And we've also got large companies like MicroStrategy, but also on the horizon, we have companies like Microsoft who may well be deciding to use Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. So it looks like full steam ahead for Bitcoin for the foreseeable future. And the consolidation that I would be expecting here now would be a really good sign for the sustainment of Bitcoin for a longer period. So for me anyway, I don't see much of a worry of Bitcoin going sideways for a period of time here. Okay, I'm going to move on to a comparison between what Bitcoin has done here and what the Bitcoin miners have been doing throughout the whole of this cycle. So 
judging by some of the comments, not just on my channel, but also on many of the other channels that cover the Bitcoin miners, there seems to be a common myth and misconception that Bitcoin has outperformed the Bitcoin miners. So if we can have a look at the full facts of the charts and not go by our emotions, what we see is that the current market started here for Bitcoin at 15,400. And this is where we invested with the Bitcoin miners over here. So if you've been watching my channel over the last many years, you'll know that going back to the end of 2022, this is where we were dollar cost averaging at the 17,000 where Bitcoin was at the time and 15,000 here. And so far, what we've done is to capture all of this move, not with Bitcoin, but with Bitcoin miners. So this is the true fact of Bitcoin from the bottom at 15,400 to the top, to the current price here today, which is now currently at 98,400, the Bitcoin price has actually gone up by 536%. So keep this in mind, 536%. So that is the whole of the move for the current bull market from the bottom at the end of 2022 to the current price today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a comparison of Bitcoin versus a basket of Bitcoin miners in the ETF WGMI. So this is a comparison between WGMI and Bitcoin. So the way to read this would be, this is the Bitcoin miners going up against Bitcoin. This is the Bitcoin miners coming down against Bitcoin, etc. So these are the ebbs and flows of the market. And this was the end of the bear market here. So the current cycle started at this point. And what we've got here, if you can take your emotions to the side, and if you can just look at this completely objectively. So if we take this green dotted line across the chart here, which is the current ratio price between WGMI and Bitcoin. So we can see from the start of the current cycle back in December 2022, from there, to that green line, the Bitcoin miners have outperformed Bitcoin by 22%. Now, this doesn't tell the full story, but the differences have been quite periodic, as you can see quite clearly with the charts. These are just pure facts. This point here is the middle of 2023. So from the end of the bear market to the middle of 2023, for the first seven months, the Bitcoin miners outperformed Bitcoin by 146%, and many of them outperformed by five, six, and seven times. And of course, from that point on, Words, the Bitcoin miners have underperformed Bitcoin by 60%, etc. So you can see quite clearly at the moment what we've had in the current cycle from this point here at the end of the bear market, from the beginning of the current bull market here to where we are currently at this point, we've had an outperformance, underperformance, outperformance, underperformance, etc since then. So this has been quite pronounced, but the chart is telling you something very, very interesting. And that is that we are currently in this particular channel here. And that channel has had a downward sloping trend line. And we've come to that trend line four times. And what we know is that every time we go and test that trend line, it becomes weaker. So by the fourth or the fifth time it's going to break out from there. And this is what we would be expecting. Of course, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody knows the future. We can only go by what the charts are telling us. And the reason why people have a misconception of what's happening with the Bitcoin miners, even though they're outperforming Bitcoin, is that from the beginning of 2024 over here to the current ratio price here, what we've got is that the Bitcoin miners have underperformed Bitcoin by about 40%. But anybody with an ounce of intelligence can tell you by looking at this particular chart that the pattern between the two is that what goes down also comes up. And if it goes down again, it also comes up. When it goes down again, it comes back up again. But this is the true facts of where we are with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So I just wanted to allay a few of the misconceptions and the fears and the myths around the underperformance of the Bitcoin miners. On the full cycle, we have performed, the miners have outperformed Bitcoin by 20%, as I've just shown you. And for those of you who are interested in following our portfolio with the Bitcoin miners that we run in the private members section where we cover the Bitcoin miners, these are the facts of our portfolio, which seem to be bearing out with what I've just shown you. And that is that our trading portfolio with the Bitcoin miners, which started on the 6th of January, in 2023, so at the beginning of 2023, we started with around $100,000, which at the end of 2023 became 434,000. So that was about a 300% increase 
all through 2023. And since then, since 2024, this has gone up a further 67%. So this is the current total that we've got. Starting off with $100,000, the current total is now at $700 and 26,389. So as we saw with Bitcoin, that had gone up by just over 500%. And this trading portfolio, since the beginning of 2023, where we started this, is now up by 624%. So the miners in our portfolio has outperformed Bitcoin. So we can see that the facts are that the miners have not underperformed. It's the perception that people have. And at the end of the day, everybody's got their own strategy. The strategy we're following here is that we have a trading portfolio of Bitcoin miners. Our target is $5 million. Whether we get 5 million, 4 million, 3 million, whatever we get, that would be a very good increase from the starting point of the 100,000. And if we did get that, that would be a 45x from the beginning of the bull market. And those of you who are interested in the Bitcoin miners, and of course you don't have to be, it's quite understandable that you want to stick to Bitcoin or the altcoins. That's your prerogative. But for those of you who are interested, I want to join the membership here where we do market updates every single day at the end of the closing day's trading session, Monday to Friday. We do these market updates for everything that's relevant to Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So as you can see, the last one that we did here, you can have a read of this if you want. This is the kind of flavor that we do in the private member section. And these are the rich, and these are the trades that we've done in the trading portfolio from the 24th of January here. These are the profit and losses. The blue numbers are all profits and the red numbers are the losses. So you can see the overwhelming trades that we've done so far, and we've done around about 30, the majority of which are in a profit. And if you're interested in joining us with the Bitcoin miners in the private membership, then all you have to do is below all of my videos, you'll find the join button here. And also in the description box, there's the join link here as well with the red button. If you can afford one coffee per week, to have access to all the trades and all the market updates on a daily basis. So if the ratio trades and the market updates are worth more than a coffee per week to you, then you can join us at £12.99 per month. And as you can see, you can cancel at any time. There's no obligation to stay for any period of time. And also for the Bitcoin miners, we do two videos per week, one on a Wednesday and one on a Friday for everything that's relevant and important for Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners, as well as bring you opportunities when there are ratio trades as they develop. Okay, so I'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you've got any comments, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.